Five minutes on the clock, please. Great, thank you, Mike. So I'm Doug Song, CEO of Duo Security, and we make two-factor authentication easy. Uh, my background is uh, I was previously co-founder of a company called Arbor Networks, which um, is the largest infrastructure security company uh, protecting pretty much the entire global internet. We've saved the internet multiple times, actually, from uh, global di distributed D DDoS attacks. And my co-founder, John Oberheide, he's actually broken the internet multiple times, um, including most recently with uh, uh, his forays into the mobile uh, landscape. So if you look at the, the first mobile botnet and some of these major breaks in Android of last year, it's that guy. Um, the problem we're solving today is the largest problem in computer security, which is rampant account takeover. Um, and uh, what we've seen is that as businesses move to the internet, so the attackers, um, smart attackers have realized that rather than going after banks directly, they can go after the users. And the growth of malware targeting users and banking credentials has pretty much had a direct correlation, as you can see with um, the instance of new financial crime. It's a huge opportunity. Um, in the US alone, it's estimated it costs about a billion dollars uh, in losses annually. Um, and what companies uh, spend, U.S. companies spend about $130 billion a year dealing with uh, attendant data breaches. Um, it's gotten to the point where actually two-factor authentication um, as, a, as a means to actually protect uh, banking credentials is actually a requirement um, uh, by both the FIC and NCAA. And uh, even in uh, sort of uh, sidecar industries like PCI, it's actually a requirement for cardholder data systems. But the cost, complexity, and, and really awful user experience of two-factor, traditional two-factor systems is what's hindered the deployment of this stuff in, you know, in any in real scale. And so what we do is we make two-factor authentication really, really easy to deploy. Uh, it's modern. Uh, it's really built for the web with open APIs. We also have a lot of open source software. Uh, a bunch of our background is actually in open source. Um, it's elegant. It only takes 15 minutes to integrate with just about any website. And it's secure. And it's secure in a way that none of our competitors are really are in that we actually present full transaction details at the time of login, uh, something that Intuit calls uh, context-aware authentication. Um, while a lot of our competitors actually focus on one aspect of, um, of a solution, you know, just to tokens or just callback or just SMS and so forth, we actually do all of that. Uh, so we've, we've packaged it all into a single sort of offering that allows the consumer the choice of what to use at, at the time of login. And uh, we've also pioneered some new factors as well, including smartphone push, sort of following the trend of web and mobile. Um, our mobile application, which is free and available actually on, on every major mobile platform, um, implements a, a patent pending technique we call Duo Push. And it's a way for us to actually um, present full transaction details, again, at the time of login. And so you can see, for instance, we actually can um, capture the entire uh, transaction for a user to approve or deny, right, in, in, in the case of a fraudulent attempt by, by an attacker. Um, but we can also support legacy uh, factors as well. So if a user needs a one-time code to, to log in, we can also do that. Um, and to protect the device itself, we've also integrated our own mobile security suite that allows us to uh, protect the device so it can actually be trusted as a mobile authenticator. In terms of our history and traction, we were founded uh, January of, of last year. We had, by March, we had our first customer, which is uh, the U.S.'s uh, second largest physician and healthcare group in America, about 400 doctors in 60 locations. Uh, we, lo we closed a seed round of funding, about a million, back in August of last year, and, uh, and f uh, finally launched publicly with our, our SaaS um, service in March of this year. And it attended six months since our launch. We've grown to 500, uh, over 500 uh, SaaS customers with users in 42 countries and include um, a, a wide variety of, of customers in just about every vertical. Um, in terms of our ask, what we're, what we're really looking for here is, uh, is some, some help in, in reaching your end of the market. So we've already partnered with the world's largest PCI QSAs that gives us reach to 2 million um, retail customers. We already have a number of small hedge fund and brokerage customers, um, as well as some interesting new kind of companies like um, these exchanges like Trade Hill, the, the, the world's uh, second largest Bitcoin exchange. Um, they're launching Bitcoin.com with us later, or using our service later. What we're really looking for are more beta customers in retail banking. Uh, we, have, we have a few already, but we need more. And we're looking for partners uh, to help us reach the long tail of small to medium banks, because that's primarily who's being hit by this problem. And um, they're very difficult to get to otherwise. Um, I'd love to enter any questions you guys might have. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. I have a question. Marcus, Marcus Richard in the back. Here. Mike, there. Mike. I have a question here. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I decide. <laughs> VeriSign very already has something very similar. What's different from that? Uh, VeriSign had, <laughs> what, what they have is a, is a mobile application that allows you to produce one-time codes, but we didn't have a service that actually, you know, uh, covered anything more than just maybe the two mobile platforms that they've, they, they, they covered, which is, uh, I think, BlackBerry and, and uh, iPhone. And the reality is that not all users have those devices. A lot of users still have feature phones. Um, and uh, at any rate, so a, a more comprehensive solution was needed. 
by now, uh, Verizon has actually divested that part of the business and sold it off to uh, Symantec. And so there's really no, no attention to that. Any other questions? Yes, yes, Marco. Yeah, how do you protect from um, theft of the, um, the phone number itself, whereby the attacker both intercepts the phone as well as the, uh, the browser? That's right. So that's a great question. Um, we, we are seeing that attackers sort of going upstream and hacking um, the factors themselves, including you know, compromising RSA, for instance, to, to get to uh, government contractors and so forth. Uh, we protect against that by actually um, uh, dividing some of the credentials on the service so that, for instance, we use a, a public key scheme that allows us to have a private key on the phone, a public key on our, on our side, to easily compromise our entire database as, as RSA's was. There's no way for, actually, for you to actually, as an attacker, um, forge transactions. Um, and because of that, we have ways that, again, uh, we, can, we can ensure uh, you know, uh, security for the highest value transactions using the mobile device, but again, allow for a gradation of, of trust. So for instance, for, for other kinds of operations, maybe a, a phone-based callback or an SMS might be acceptable, but to move money, you want, you want, you want push. Sean. Yeah, um, over here. Yeah, a couple, couple, couple quick questions. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be interested if you could give us a little bit of insight into your, into your uh, economic model, your business, your pricing model. And also, uh, when you do, um, uh, what are, if, if there are a typical reason for people that don't buy your service. People, you got in front of you got in front of the right people. Uh -huh. Why would they not? Um, what are the reasons they give for not uh, subscribing? Okay, thank you. Uh, in terms of our current business model, we're, we're a SaaS delivered application. Um, uh, although we also have an on-premise solution for for customers that need it. Um, but the reality is that we, we right now we're sort of straddling the existing two-factor market that goes after mostly enterprise, mostly for remote access. As it turns out, there's a long tail of, of smaller folks um, than that that RSA can't cover, and there's also many bigger folks. For instance, users, you know, customers with many millions of users that you know, existing two-factor solutions will never be appropriate for. And for those kinds of large customers on the consumer side, we, we implement transaction-based pricing the same way that you know, many, many other folks have done. Um, in terms of uh, sales objections or what people, reasons people don't implement, um, mostly it's around, uh, it's around uh, fear that their users will be will completely put off. Um, and we've seen many, many customers say that, uh, you know, I haven't, I've never considered anything like this because um, our, our, our customers will go to a different different uh, provider, um, and what we've seen is that a lot of our focus on the user experience, making that as easy as possible, and providing as many solutions for the, for the consumer to engage um, in a secure manner has is, is, is been the solution. No, sorry. We're done, sorry. We are done. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>